Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, we are going to be learning trigonometric graphs. Now I should mention that this is something that's only part of IGCSC. Okay, this is not part of O level math, and uh, the syllabus code for IGCSC math is zero five eight zero. Oops, sorry, not zero five zero eight zero five eight zero. Okay, so. It's not part of O-level math, although there are other graphs such as quadratic, cubic graphs that are now part of O-level as well as IGCSE math, but this is exclusive for IGCSC. Now, whenever you hear the word trigonometric graphs from now on, okay, and we, we will reach this point, so don't worry if you're not at this point. So whenever you hear, you hear trigonometric graphs, these are the three trigonometric functions that should come to mind, and these are the three functions around which all of trigonometry revolves anyway. And whenever you hear sine x, so you should immediately be able to recall that this is what the graph of sine looks like. Whenever you hear cos x, once again, you should be immediately able to recall this is what the graph of cos looks like. And then same goes for tan x as well. Now, tan x has a weird looking graph. We'll find out how that works. But uh, yeah, this is, this is the state that you should reach, inshallah, uh, after a decent amount of practice. So... And the questions are very straightforward as far as the graph questions are concerned and even trigonometric equations are concerned, which we're going to cover in the next video, inshallah. Questions are very straightforward, so there's nothing to worry about. Just make sure that you get a good hold of the basic concept. Now, y equals to sine x. So sine x is a trigonometric function, something that we have been using, but now we're going to learn how to make the graph of it. So what? in order to make a graph, remember, we want some values. Like, for example, if I ask you to make a straight line, you're gonna plug in some x values and you're gonna get some y values uh, in return and you're gonna mark those points and you're gonna make the graph, okay? Now with trigonometric graphs, we don't take values like we normally do when we're making a straight line or a curve, such as zero, one, two, three, and then some negative values, no. Because if you do that, you will not be able to see the entire cycle. So you need to be able to see the entire cycle. Remember, trigonometric graphs are repetitive in nature. Like for example, if you make a straight line, a line will just continue in a certain direction forever. If you make a quadratic curve, so a quadratic curve could be either something like this, like a minimum curve or a maximum curve. It could be something like this or something like this. And that's it. They're not repetitive in nature. So if it turns, it turns. That's it. Now it's just going to continue in one direction. But trigonometric graphs are cyclical in nature. Okay, So there's one cycle. And then after that, there will be another cycle. And then after that, there will be another cycle. And then the whole pattern will continue forever. Same goes for cos. After one cycle, there's another cycle. Then there's another cycle. And then same goes for tan also. So we need to be able to see at least one complete cycle. That's how we decide the values. That's why these are the values. You see some odd looking values that we plug into the trigonometric function. And you don't have to, uh, these values will not change. These are the standard values that you will plug in in sine and in cos for with tan. However, there's a slight difference, which we're going to learn uh, shortly, inshallah. So let's plug in zero. If you plug in zero, you will notice that you get zero. You can use your calculator for now, but after that, you must have these values memorized. And then if you plug in 90, you will get one. And then after that, if you plug in 180, you will get zero once again. And then if you plug in 270, you'll get minus one. And if you plug in 360, you get zero. So the way that you can memorize the values is through the shape of the graph. And you can memorize the shape of the graph through the values. So they're all interconnected. And this requires practice. Don't think that after one question, you will have everything memorized. No, this requires practice. Just solve like two, three questions and that's it. You're good. So. 0, 0, that means it's going to be somewhere over here. 91, so that's going to be here. 180, 0, that's going to be here. 270 minus 1, that's here. And 360, 0, that's here. Now let's join all the points and make a nice and smooth curve. And this is what we get. And that's it. You know, that's literally it. That's all there is. You can see that the maximum value is 1. You can see that the minimum value is 1. And these are all the details that you need to know. In case there are any AdMath students watching this, I know in AdMath we have a lot of details. When it comes to trigonometric graphs, we don't have that here in IGCSC math. Now let's talk about cos x. Now as far as cos x is concerned, once again, we're going to plug in the same values, the same x values. And if you plug in 0, you will notice that you get 1. If you plug in 90, you'll notice that you get 0 at 180 minus 1 at 270, 0 at 360, you get 1 again. Now let's mark these points on the xy plane. So here we have five values. Now let's join these five points and make a nice and smooth curve. Remember, it should be a freehand curve. It should be a smooth curve. And all the, all the stuff that's related to drawing a curve still applies here as well. And that's it. We have the graph of cos as well. Now let's look at tan. Now you might notice 
I'm sure you have noticed by now that I we don't have values the same as we did with for for sine and cos we have some values in between like for example we have 45 we have 135 we have 225 we have 315 and we have 360 and there's very good reason behind that <clears throat> and I'll show you what that reason is so plug in 0 in place of x in tan uh, in tan x you'll get 0 if you plug in 90 you will notice that your calculator gives you a math error now math error can mean a lot of things but in this case what it means is basically infinity okay and i'll show you what how we show that on the graph and then if you plug in 180 you get zero once again and then if you plug in 270 you will get infinity again and then if you plug in 360 you'll get infinity once again you'll get zero once again now if i ask you to mark these points on the graph and show me the shape of the curve you won't be able to that's not enough information how you just have two points and of the two only one is a point which is actually plottable, which is actually uh, a point that you can mark on the graph. Infinity is not something you can mark on the graph. So what do you do? That's why we take values in between so that we have a good idea of the shape of the curve. So if you plug in 45, you will get one. If you plug in 135, you'll get minus one. And then if you plug in 225, you'll get one again. And if you plug in 315, you get minus one. Now, as I mark these points, you'll notice that we kind of now have an idea as to what the graph is going to look like. So let's mark 0, 0 at 45, which is going to be somewhere in between 0 and 90. There is 1. Now, what do we do at 90? Now, at 90 and at 270, basically every time a graph reaches infinity, we have something called an asymptote. Okay, now, yes, this is, uh, I find it a cool word, asymptote. But what it means by definition is that these are infinite dotted lines. And you, you don't necessarily have to draw them, but they're there. Okay, you can't see them, but they're there. Infinite dotted lines that the curve approaches, but does not intersect okay does not touch then and does not intersect so it approaches it but it does not touch it it does not intersect it now here's something interesting that i would like you guys to do and uh, pick up your calculator and reset your calculator okay now notice that tan 45 gives us one and tan 90 we can see gives us a math error which is infinity but try and find out tan 89 okay so use your calculator and try and find out tan 89, which is a value that's very close to 90. I mean, 89 is very close to 90. So you notice that you get a certain value, which is 57.2. So 57 something, okay? I'm not gonna write down the exact value, but 57 something basically, approximately 57, let's put it that way. Now I want you to plug in tan of 89.9. This is just for your understanding, by the way. And then you will notice that if you plug in, if you work out tan of 89.9, you get a value which is approximately 573. And just like that, try and find out tan of 89.99. You get 5,729 something. So approximately 5,730. And then tan of 89.999, 57,295 point something. So what's the trend over here? The trend is that as we're getting closer and closer to 90 on the x-axis, the y-axis is just increasing exponentially. Okay, so that means the closer you get to 90, the greater the y value gets. And the second it's 90, it's undefined. It's so large that it's practically impossible to calculate. That's why what we do at 90 is that we draw a vertical asymptote. Okay, so the idea of this vertical asymptote is to show that the graph is going to approach this line, but it's never going to touch it or let, if it's obviously not going to touch it, it's obviously not going to intersect it either. So this is what the graph looks like. There we go. Yeah. Now what happens after 90? So what I would like you guys to do is work out tan of 90.01. So if you work out tan of 90.01, you get an extremely negative value. Okay, and then the the value right after 90, as in let's say that it's immediately after 90, or a value which is very, um, what should I say, only slightly greater than 90 gives you a extremely gives you an extremely negative value. Okay, so that means right after 90, the graph starts from negative infinity, 
at 135, it's minus one. So that's gonna be somewhere around here. And at 180, it's zero. So that means right after 90, this is what the graph looks like. There you go. And then after this, what happens after this? After this, the pattern continues. Okay, so after this, the pattern continues at 270. Once again, you can see that we have a vertical asymptote. So we make a dotted line. And at 225, which is exactly in between 180 and 270, it's one. And then this is the graph that we get. And then after that, right after 270, it becomes negative infinity. At 315, it's minus one. So that's gonna be somewhere over here. At 360, it's zero. Whoops, sorry about that. And then this is what we get. Okay, let's fix this a little. There you go. Now this is a sketch at the end of the day, so it's not 100% accurate. But yeah, this is what the shape of the curve looks like. Okay, so remember what I said in the beginning? I said that every time you hear the word sine or every time you're, you recall the function sine, you should know that this is what the curve of sine looks like, this is what the curve of cos looks like, and this is what the curve of tan looks like, okay? So I hope it's clear, and you will notice that the post paper questions are very straightforward. You just have to make the graph of sine, cos, and tan without any addition, subtraction, or multiplication. So yeah, this is how it works. I do recommend that you guys memorize all these values. It's very important. And uh, just practice a few questions, and you will be able to memorize it. Now, I'll attach a PDF where you can find all the practice questions, all the uh, practice questions of trigonometry graphs and equations and you're well, very welcome to practice that so yeah that's it that's it for this video i hope you've understood the concept and i'll see you guys inshallah in the next video so until then take care Allah Hafiz.